Welcome to this video to discuss about how to join tables together. Um, with this you need to really understand a few core concepts. The select statement for one, um, a where clause for another. Um, these are previous videos that you can watch at pcteach.me. Um, what we're going to do is with that knowledge is now extend further into joining tables together. The other additional knowledge you should have an understanding of is what a primary key and a foreign key is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a subsequent video about about this um, which will just talk about the theory which is the boring stuff and the whole point of these videos is to make them fun and um, full of action so what I've done is I've got two tables in front of us here which will contain a join now what I've done for easiness for this video is I've actually put the ordering by the columns that I'm, I'm interested in so in the customers table it's the first column so make sure they're in alphabetical order and in the second table, the orders table, I'm saying ordering it by the second column, which is the customer ID. So as you can see here between the two tables, let me just scroll up a little bit here, as you can see that if from the customers table, which is the top view, we have a customer here with the code of ALF KI. And down at the bottom, you can see there are six records relating to ALF KI. So it's really a case of joining them together. The other thing I would like you to pay note to, which is going to affect us a bit further on in this video is the number of rows which are being returned. So what I've got here is I've got 830 rows in the orders table whereas at the top here I have 91 rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some comments just to say this so we can come back to it a bit later on. So I believe it was 880. Let me just check. Oh, 830. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at joining these tables together. And, and to join, is, it's relatively a straightforward process. However, there are some um, different flavors you can add to a join statement, which we will um, proceed to cover through this video. But the basic syntax is as follows. So we do select, and then we specify the fields. For laziness, I'm going to use star from customers which at the moment is exactly the same as the top statement I typed in here. The difference is though what we do next. Now what I'm going to do to make it easier to read is I'm pressing return or enter and then pressing the tab key and then I'm going to type in the word join and then type in the word orders. So I'm saying I want to connect those two tables together followed by the word on and then I would now specify the fields that I want to connect it to. So looking at the results here, I want to choose the customers table and the customer ID. So I would do customers dot customer ID. Now, just briefly to explain what we're doing here is because we have two field names exactly the same in the orders table, it's called customer ID. And in the customers table, it's called customer ID. We need to tell the computer how and how do we get that field? Remember, a computer at the end of the day is stupid. It's your programming that makes it look clever. So we need to define the customers table and then the field. So once we've done that, we'll say equals, and then we have to do the same thing on the other side, which is the orders table. So orders dot customer ID. And that's it. That is your join done. So if I now just F5 that, or click on execute, you'll see now that I'm getting at the bottom 830 rows which corresponds with the number of orders. Um, if I scroll across you can see I've got the um, Alf, uh, Alfred Futterkist repeated six times and if I scroll across eventually I'll jump from the customer information to the actual order information and there we go you can see I'm now getting the rest of the information so I've now effectively joined these tables together. Now I'm going to jump slightly ahead in regards to one of the options that we're going to cover in a, another video which is about grouping information together. The reason I want to do this is because I need to illustrate about this join in a little bit more detail. Sure, we've got a join statement which joins the orders and the customers table together by this ID. But just because you've joined it doesn't necessarily mean that's showing you the correct answer. Now. For me to explain this, what I need to do is just adjust this query slightly. So I'm going to pause the video and then I'll explain what I've done. Okay, so let me just talk about what I'm doing here. What I've done is I've just tailored this SQL statement just in a little bit more detail. So if I just uh, run this, you'll see that all it's doing is just trimming off all the fat. I'm just interested in the customer ID, the company name and the order that it was related to. So you could treat the order ID as the invoice number. 
Um, so I've got a list of, as you can see, 830 rows. Now, if you recall, if I just run the or select the orders table, I will see 830 rows because that's what it is. So it's clearly joining them all together. Now, let's say you're having to produce a report and part of that option on the report is to say, I want to see how many customers have produced orders. Now, we know by looking at the customers table, there are 91 rows and we know there are 830 orders. So if you wanted to produce a brief SQL statement to show me all of the um, customers um, with orders, you've got to be a little bit careful because the join may burn you if you're not if you're not very careful. Now let me explain this. What I've done is on this other sheet tab here is I've sort of perverted what we've done already just to give it a bit more information. Now as you can see this bit is still the same. I'm joining the same as before. I'm choosing the customer ID and the company name as before. The difference is rather than selecting the order ID I'm telling the computer I want to count the order IDs. Also, I need to also tell it to group it by the company um, name and the customer ID. So what that means is when I used to see, if I switch back, switch back to here, I've got six rows here for Alfred Futterkist. What's going to happen is on this one is it's going to reduce that down to one row and just say there are six values. And I'll tell you what, instead of it just saying count, I'll just call it as total orders. And if I just run that again, there we go. So we've got total orders, in fact. Me being completely finicky, let me just give it a proper name. And so there we have it. Now, the key thing I want you to look at though is the number of rows it's returning. If you look down at the bottom, 89 rows. Now, hang on a minute, let me just jump back to the other sheet tab where we've got the customers table. Now, if I run that, it's showing 91 rows. So how can we have this disconnect? How can we suddenly go from having 91 customers with our join statement all the way through to now having 89 rows? The reason being is this join statement. Now let me explain why. Because if I go back to here and we just run the orders table on its own, it's showing 830 rows. If I go and select the statement which is just returning all the records, or the partial record results, that also is showing 830 rows. So, so far, so good, that's absolutely right. But now what we're saying is that the customer's table's more important. Now, what's going on? Well, could it be possible that there are customers on your database that haven't placed any orders? Now, if that's the case, they're not going to appear. And the reason being is because of this statement. Because we're saying, only show me customers where the, the order table is also present. So what if I've got a customer on here which has not got any orders in the orders table? Well, this is the problem. What we need to do is we need to change the join type. And this is where we come across another join type known as left. Left join indicates that we have the customers table and then we have the orders table. It's all to do with this. So because the customers is first, left emphasizes that customers is more important than the orders table. So watch what happens now. So you can see we've got 89 rows. Now if I run this, hopefully I should now get my 91. But at the moment, looks no different. Now what I'm going to do is at the end, I'm just going to put in order by 3 descending. Well, sorry, now let's just leave it on order by 3 ascending. Now if I execute this, watch what happens. You'll now see that I suddenly get two records at the top, Paris and Fissa, which do not have any orders. Now, if I take that left join off again and run it again like that, you'll see that they disappear. So, if you're going to produce a report or anything inside SQL, do not take for granted the join statement because it can very easily burn you. There's a lot of times when you won't have information on the other side of the fence. And so depending on what you're trying to pull out of the system will depend on the different kind of join that you choose. Now the most common ones that you would have is the join or it can also be known as inner join. Um, you can type that in but I don't, I just leave it as join. And then once you've got the join you've also then got the options of left or the other option of right, which is the opposite, which means now emphasize orders is more important than customers. So if I just run this, you'll notice that I go back to my 89 rows because I'm emphasizing that orders is more important than customers, whereas left join emphasizes 
the customers is more important than the orders. So hopefully this video has explained a little bit about joins. This is not the end of the story with joins, but this is sort of your starting point into the bigger world of SQL. So thanks for watching.